Welcome to Sister Ruth's prayer meeting. Share the broadcast and enter into the presence of the Lord. And our hearts will follow. Oh. stop at one time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We want to be sensitive yeah. to the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Is everybody listening to me? Yeah. You know, this this is just on a prayer meeting. This is a learning place. Richard, yes. why did you stop? That's right. Yeah. Because the microphone dropped to the floor. That's okay. You're, that, that, you're oh. over there on that microphone, okay? We want to stay in the spirit. I was testing the spirit, you know, listening to the spirit. I just got a 
recall that my best friend, or our good friend rather, had passed away, and I wondered about her home going, and someone called me, and they, her family is not familiar with the move of the Spirit, and they just went into the room like an army, declaring the glory of the Lord, anointing with that oil that, that was at the brother's, um, the brother that had the oil, you know, that suddenly appeared in his Bible, and she said, anoint all my children, anoint my grandchildren. And they just had revival there in the room while she was going home. This is the way it should be. Should be no sting, should be no cry, no heartache. And we want to know the way of the spirit, the way of the cloud. The Bible says, No, the ways of the Lord. They're very high. And we lift him up. We will understand his ways. And we were concerned about that because we weren't able to go to the hospital. And just as I got in the car, somebody called me from Maricopa telling me that they had gone to visit her and, and she was there three days praying with her. She said, I need somebody to pray. I need somebody to pray. She was 83 years old and she worked with Katie Souza. She was one of her generals. Amen? And so, I mean, can we say amen? God is never late and he knows what to do and when to do it and how to do it. And he brought her all the way from Maricopa, but we spent a lot of time praying at home and believing God for the victory in her life. Amen. The Lord, we just thank you. I want everybody to take hands together, if you will. Please, no, not a lot of talking. And while we're getting settling down, we've come into the presence of the Lord. And I appreciate it so much when people are open to it and they lift their hands. Richard, can we have a little music, please? Let's just join hands and let's, let's be in the... Something gentle, something gentle. Let's just have it. Join our hands together and let faith arise. Let every enemy be scattered. Let the glory of the Lord come down upon us this morning. God, I thank you that you're tuning our hearts. You're fine-tuning our spirit, oh God. To know you, to know you, to know you, Lord, is to obey you, to trust you. Hallelujah, to love you through all circumstances. And we thank you, Lord, that all of heaven is rejoicing today. That Georgia has come home. God, you said that where you are, that you'll make a place for us. We thank you for the place that you made for her. God, you caused her to come to where you are, oh Lord, and how blessed she is. She just got there before we did. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for rejoicing him. Thank you for the peace that's in the hearts of her family. Thank you, Lord, for knowing you've done all that we can do. We've done it. We give you praise, Lord, in the wonderful name of Jesus. We call upon you because you're the one that says, Call upon me, and I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. Lord, we know that all that you do is mighty and great and wonderful and beyond what we can ask or think and beyond what we can speak about. Lord, let us go beyond where we were yesterday, even a moment ago. Lord, into your sight, into your arms, God, into your presence for this fullness of joy and life evermore. We thank you for that life, that laughter, that love. Thank you, Jesus.
angelic faces, remember? He said, some look like angels, but some look like people. And I quickly connected the dots. Because I told you how many times my pastor has visited me recently, and he's been dead for 20-some years. But he was prophetic. And his word was all about the prophetic. How many of you read his word he gave recently about America? It's not good. And I know I keep telling you this, and I, I even said to the Lord, I guess they're tired of me here and talking about this. But when you feel the burden of the Lord, you can't escape it. I mean, it's, it's almost like hounds behind you nipping at your heels. <coughs> and, you know, I felt that Georgia was going to go because people were calling me to buy my house. My house is connected or I won't go any further. About three people called me wanting to buy my house. And so, you know, you, we, God's not coming to say, now sell your house. He wants us to know the winds of the Spirit, how they suddenly change. And you'll see, you'll feel this change and you'll know what to do. Because the winds is what keeps us alive. If it wasn't, you know, if there wasn't any movement of air, we wouldn't be able to breathe. But it, it's the breath of the Lord in the <clears throat> earth. And we're breathing in and breathing out the eternal purposes of God. But Jeremiah Johnson gave a word. He said he saw Nineveh written across America. Whoa. 
Nineveh. And I'm not trying to bring it, be a, a bear or bad news, but I'm telling you, abortion has gone on long enough. The church should have done something by now. I know. Anybody hear me? Yeah. Something. Some of these big leaders, especially, I understand now where by the Lord told Sister Ruth, don't go to the big churches. He said, go to the cornfields of America because they're feeding America. It's what's taking care of the country that God is going to visit. You hearing me? It's not that we have a great big church and a lot of people coming in. Oh, wasn't it wonderful? What is God saying? This is what you want to know. What is he saying every day? Hallelujah. What is his purpose? What's his direction? And so she, he said he saw some of the people. It's a long prophecy that looked like people. And I said to Dee, I said, oh, that's why I keep seeing Brother Applin. And you, we're not making a doctrine at it, but we're going to see things we haven't seen before. The greatness of God and the heavenly wealth is going to come down in more ways than one way of how God operates and how he wants to move. Because we're at the ends of times here. How many feel you're at the end of time? You're right on the edge, right on the precipice of what God is doing. And he said the Lord showed him, and he had permission of Lou Ingalls. What, what, are, what is it on, that vision? In January. Yeah. And this uh, year. Lori uh seen it and post she reposted it on Facebook and then I got it from Okay. Well Wednesday night in church I saw America like a huge ship and it was on its side in the water and couldn't be pulled up. I saw it. And I saw God putting stripes and gold bars on people. He was making them generals. Some were two stars, three stars, and four star generals. He's going to push you out. Now, be ready. Don't try to stay in the nest. Do what you can do. God doesn't expect any more than what you can do for him. But I remember, brother, I saw Brother Heflin, and he had those eagle's eyes. The prophetic is going to move in all of you in a new way. Be alert. Be ready. Be careful of opinions. God, this, just this week we're in my house, and I heard these big words God gave to me, and I can hardly pronounce them, and I said, look this word up, look this word up. And, you know, God was giving me direction through those words that he gave me. So if we don't want to be opinionated, we want to know. And I, I said to, I'm just telling you this so that this, what I'm telling you will happen in any circle of your life. What God does is just not in the church. You all know that. It's in everything that you do, your walk with God. And I told Dee, I said, I don't feel her presence in the earth anymore. I don't feel to pray anymore. She's gone, and I didn't know it at the time. But I told Dee, I said, she's going to go on the 28th. Mm -hmm. Well, the 28th is a day of eternity. It's a number of eternity. Wow. Probably some of you didn't know that. Wow. Isn't God good? He honored her with that. God is so good. He's so good. Yes, he is. Praise you, Jesus. Wants to make it like a celebration when yes. somebody goes home. Yes. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> but the word of the Lord was Nineveh was written across this nation, and several big prayer warriors like Lou Eagles. Now you got permission from Lou Eagles to put this on here. Uh, I'll just give you spurts of it that he was in a morgue, and he somehow he got him and pulled him out, and and the Lord said he hadn't prayed like he used to pray. Well, you know, Lou Eagles is every breath is prayer. But you can't stop now, honey. Come on, you don't stop now. You're almost at the end of the race. We don't stop now doing what we've always done. It's all recorded that your trust is in the Lord. With all your heart, lean not to our own understanding, but in all of our ways. In all of our ways, acknowledge him. Um, I don't know if we should read it. It's quite lengthy. Uh, it, it bothered me. And there's a scripture that talks about that. If, if these things do not bother us, that we do not know the mind of the Lord and what's happening. But this country is in dire straits. Dire straits. Amen. And our president is doing all that he can to pull it together. So you better believe he gets another term. Yeah, oh yeah. Because we might not have a, a lot. What I'm saying to you is that, you know, when 9-11 was here, everybody was up going to church, calling unto God. And, you know, they were just near the throne constantly. But you got to stay in that new place every day. Come closer every day as the times draw near. Get closer and closer to the Lord. And knock on the door. Lord, what are you saying? What are you saying? What are you saying? 
Now, this is how the Lord began to speak to me. We're going to pray for America because we prayed. Remember how we prayed and we had a victory on the vote here over the abortion? Remember what we saw happen in Virginia? And now it will affect four people. Four. They're one of the main signers of this new bill on abortion. Four of them, like Domino affects the governor, the attorney general, the um, lieutenant governor, and it was one more they're thinking. Yes, I mean, their, their, their lives, their, their, everything that they do has almost been destroyed in life, all that they've waited for. Well, we're waiting for the coming of the Lord, and as we do, we do all that we do. We prepare what we need to do. We prepare. We're preparing all the time. A woman is preparing for her wedding, and the closer the day gets, the busier she is. How many have ever been married know what I'm talking about? Nobody just runs, say, we're going to get married today, you know, and run down and get married. No, there's your people you have to talk to. There's a preparation. There's a dress. You know, coming to church is like a wedding. You're coming down to the altar. You're saying, I do one more time. Come on. <laughs> I do or I will. <laughs> Anybody got me? <laughs> yes. But the word of the Lord was, was, as I read it, but the Lord said, unless America repents, that it means there needs to be a real weeping between the, they call it the porch and the altar. Anybody know what that means between the porch and the altar? Anybody have any idea? When he said between the porch and the altar, it means what's done in the closet is going to be shouted from the house top. What we have done for the Lord. The prayers of the righteous are going to be answered. Come on. They're going to be answered. But let some let some intercession come. We had intercession in our house for our friend Georgia. You have to know who she is. I told you she was a general for Katie Susie, who was raised up under uh, Patricia King. And my friend just got back from Honduras. She just called me. I told you I'm coming here. I'm on the phone all the way. She said, I just got back from Honduras. I had an email that she was ill. And she drove almost 50 miles to go to the hospital. And she said, I went in the room speaking in tongues. And they said, who are you? And they even told us that we don't know how to pray. We don't know how to pray. And, and George is in the bed, listen, breathing and gasping. Pray for them. Pray for them. Anoint them with oil. Come on, your dying breath. Come on. Yes. It's going to be exalting the Lord, yes. praising Amen. the Lord, thanking the Lord, yes. declaring the goodness yes. of the Lord, the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't let anybody steal your voice or your trumpet. Praise you, Jesus. We glory in you, O oh Lord. We glory in you, O oh Lord. But uh, I called Rock. Well, Rock Winters called me and he wanted me to speak on holiness. I thought, oh Lord, make me holy. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> you preach who you are, you become what you eat. And he wanted me to come and speak. He's having four weeks of holiness. And I said to him suddenly, I said, do you know what Jeremiah Johnson? He said, I'm on the phone right now trying to contact him. We met in the middle of the road. And you know, we want to be eating the same bread and on the same page and we'll flow together. Hallelujah. And it, it is probably going to be the one that was washing Jesus' feet and kissing his feet and weeping. Thank you, Lord, for the steps you've made for me. Thank you, Lord, for stepping into my life. Come on. Thank you, Lord, for your beautiful feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's a very long word that the Lord gave him. I think I gave you the highlights of it, did I not? But he said Nineveh was written across the United States. I'm telling you this because I believe some of you God has been speaking to you. You just didn't put the dots together. I heard my father three times in the past six months speaking about Nineveh. My father's been dead for 30 years. Not Nineveh, I'm sorry, Nahum. Well, Nahum is about Nineveh. And I thought, and I read it, and I thought, boy, there's a mystery in this book. It's hard to understand. It starts out like poetry, but it ends up the disgrace of Nineveh. And do you know what their, their horrors were? The 
God destroyed that city because they were such a wicked people. And their wickedness was this. If they didn't like people, they just didn't put them to death. They did it in such a horrible way, you can't believe it. I don't even want to tell you what I know. What are we doing to our babies in this country? God compares it to abortion in this nation. They would stake people to the ground and then skin them alive. That's hard to digest. And they're talking about, I heard the other day, they were just, I don't know, it's awful. How they're, before they can hardly get out of the mother's body, taking body parts. I'm like, where have we come to? What has happened to this nation? Evil. There's a sore evil, the Bible says, in the land. And the demons, all the demons are being released now. Now know who you are and just keep a good spirit about everything. And it's not easy to do when all the traffic's coming your way. You're trying to avoid a lot. But listen, God's going to avoid a lot out of our lives. Come on, how many want him to do it? God, remove everything that's a hindrance to me. And listen, it might be a good friend. It's not that they're bad, but it might be bad for you. They're not walking and talking with you in agreement. Sometimes it's family. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm reading about John last night, how the revelator, the one that Jesus loved. They said he had three terrible personalities in his life. I didn't know that. That God had to remove. Said he could really get mad at the saints because they didn't do right. Oh, Lord. It almost pierced me. But God made him the beloved. He's the one that knew him. He knew who he was. And we, you know, Paul said, oh, that I might know him. Well, if you want to know him, you're going to bury the scars of suffering. You're going to bear the marks of knowing him and who he is. We, we, we've hardly learned how to lay our lives down for a friend. I, I, I wanted to go see this woman, but the door wasn't open. It's all I'll say to you. It was difficult. But God sent somebody in there. <laughs> You heard my cry. Come on. You heard my plea. We were praying. Yes. Praying that she had everything in order. Yes. You say, why are you saying this? Because every one of you are going to be on the same Jericho road yes. more than once in your life. And you have to tend to all these things. You have to take care of all these things. Amen? Amen. And so death has no sting. The grave has no victory. When we know what we've done to please the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was telling you again, I kept hearing my father talk about Nahum. And then I kept reading about Nineveh, and I thought, God, what are you trying to say to me? But at least, honey, I was in the church within hearing. But it's by revelation, he said to Peter, this is how I build my church. I speak to you in revelation. By revelation. You know, we can know a lot of things by reading or hearing, preaching or prophecy. But God wants us to know in our spirit. We know that we know. And she said, Georgia said she had peace before she left. But she was gasping for breath, but telling this lady, pray for my children. Anoint my grandchildren. I mean, everybody was in the room. She was anointing them with that oil. I tell you, she had, Georgia had a little fruit there right at the end. Don't how many want that fruit to end? Your fruit will tarry. Hallelujah. Your fruit will remain. What you have sown, come on, that no man is, has destroyed or it hasn't rotted, but it smells precious before the Lord. And he'll say, well done. Now, you can take that either way. Well done or you're cooked well. <laughs> My good and faithful servant. You'll come home many times after one of these storms or hurricanes. And what was that all about, Lord? You were still standing. Come on. Your hair was all over your head. You felt like you'd been ravished. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> But he doesn't give you all the details in between. And suddenly you see a little light or you see a little trophy or you see a little diamond shining where God just purified and beautified something in our lives. I love it. I love the training. You will always be trained. It means there will always be a little rain in your life. So let it be a rain that brings the harvest. 
as a storm, let it bring a bountiful harvest. Come on. <laughs> they said that people over in California, what's the city that was destroyed? Paradise. Where? Paradise. Paradise. Can you imagine? It was their paradise. That people are still sifting through the ruins looking for treasures. I say, honey, give him the ashes for beauty. Just give it yes. to the Lord. Trust him. He knows how to restore. Yes. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Yes. He's going to wake King Harazarus like he did for Mordecai and said, now who in the middle of the night he couldn't sleep? Bring me the book of Chronicles. And Jesus never slumbers or sleeps. And our book is before you, Lord. You said, though we tarry to wait. God, show us how to get the victory over this abortion law. Jesus. I call my friend, and, and I, I'm just telling you these things because we need to get a greater burden until we see the victory. If he has to move all of these people out of the Congress. I call my friend in Canada. She was a midwife. I'm sorry, she's in Israel because some people are coming over. She delivered a lot of babies. She has pictures of holding the babies. And she said, Sister Ruth, she says, I've heard about over here what's happening in America. She said, all I can say when I hear it is, oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. You just have to call upon him and say, help. Help. Hallelujah. Help. Come on, help. Jesus. 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 Oh, Jesus. And you know, the Lord doesn't want to have to cripple everybody and remove people. He wants people to have a heart and a conscience. How many are you what I'm saying? A heart or a conscience. To do the simple thing. Because God doesn't forget anything. It's not he's holding it over your head like a hatchet. It's not that. It's just he records our life and what we do. And the good and the bad and the ugly is all there together. So I'm asking him to remove all the things that are not pleasing. And even if I perish, Esther said, if I perish, I perish. Yeah. I'm going to see the king. You got that? Yes. Then on Mordecai, I said, you've been called. All of you in this room, I want you to look at yourself. The Lord said, I've saved the best for last. Look at yourself. Hallelujah. Look at the person next to you. You see each other. You see each other. Listen, you want to know what you look like? You know what they said in the Holocaust? <laughs> One said to the other, they had no mirrors. And so they said, what do I look like? He said, you're looking at them. I look just like you. Wow. They, he, God wants us to all be the same, his bride. Come on. His bride. His bride by his side. Amen. Hallelujah. And Esther, Mordecai came to her. He was a type of the Holy Spirit. He said, you better go in and see the king. She said, I can't go unless he asks me. He said, don't think you're going to be exempt if trouble comes. Did you know Jesus may not have been born if they'd have gotten rid of the Jews at that time? That was what the devil was doing, was trying to remove That's right. the race. Yes. We're in the race, honey. Come on. He's not going to remove us. How many of you are happy about your salvation? Yes. yes. So here's what you do. Don't stay in the dumps, please. I beg all of you, don't stay down. Because listen, if a sheep gets on its back, the shepherd's got to come and get him out. He can't get up. If you get down, get up as quickly as you can. David encouraged himself in the Lord. And tell the Lord. And when you start saying it, you're going to feel good about yourself. There's no good thing in me, Lord. I know that, but you're good. Hallelujah. And you're going to help me. You're going to help me. I'm telling you, this is how it works. You're going to help me. You'll be able to adjust your shoulders, get your spirit straightened out, and go on to know the Lord. Come on. Go on to know how he operates. Go on to see how he operates. Okay? You got a red light here. You got a green light over there. It's on the same highway. Thank you, Jesus. And it seems that sometimes things are just not moving. Well, wait till the truck comes by, honey. It'll move. <laughs> It'll come suddenly. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Suddenly. My little niece and nephew called me this summer, last summer, or whatever it was, and they, they called me, and they were coming to see me. My sister called me first two days before they arrived. She says, my son's coming with his wife, and I thought it would be like a week or so. Then all of a sudden, I got a call one morning. 
We're on our way to see you. I sent a text back, how far away are you? 50 miles, oh my goodness. I was putting things in the dryer, in the stove, in the shed, in the car. Now my house is not messed up, you understand, but how many live in your house? I know where everything is, I'm not cluttered, but I don't live in a museum, hallelujah. Everything is, and you don't live like that, you, your, your face is too busy. Come on, did anybody have these things? Yeah. So I put, I hope, and then they want to use the dryer. <laughs> My root house is not big enough to get anything else in it, so I have to get something away to get something. But anyway, they're 50, 50 miles away. I hadn't combed my hair yet. Come on. How fast can I comb my hair? It takes somebody, some people 50 miles to comb their hair. And I'm rushing to get that house in order, and then I thought, oh, goodness, what can I give them to eat? Because I knew what they liked, not just what we have here. What do they like? And I'm talking to Dee, and we're trying to run her to the store. You know what I'm saying? Something fast, and they arrived. They needed baths. They needed to wash clothes. He needed to put a thousand gallons of water, it seemed like, into his mother. And that was all right. Because you know what? He sent a he sent a card to me three years ago, a card blanche to go wherever I wanted to go. Get my car fixed, put the best oil in it, Hallelujah. go to the Grand Canyon stay at the best hotels and eat the best food for a whole week. Amen. You remember these people. Yes. Come on. Yes. Whoa, I feel something running all over me and it seems yeah. like Jesus. <laughs> so listen, when God suddenly shows up in a new way, set the table. Come on. Yes. Set the table. You don't know the next table he's going to lay out for you. But he did. He sent this credit card with his mother, paid her away and someone to come with her. And said, tell Aunt Ruth to buy whatever she needs. Wow. And only put synthetic oil in her car. Well, you know they cost a little more. Yes. The best gas, tell her to get her car washed. I thought, boy, it needs washing. How do you know all this? Like an angel was speaking. And how many want these wonderful experts from heaven to come down and help you? But that means you're going to be busy doing things that's against your flesh, against your schedule. Against what you think you need to do. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I know because I ask people all the time, can you do this? And instead of saying, okay, here's what I get. Well, I can't do it right now. And, and they give me, I got to do this. And somebody's coming. They don't want to do it. Yeah. Now you say, why are you telling me this? Because it's this way through the whole body of Christ. Yeah. No, it's the Lord. No, it's the Lord asking you when a person comes and asks you. It's the Lord. If we have the mind of the Lord. And if it's not, he'll throw up a roadblock. Come on, you'll stop it. But know the ways of the Lord are very high. They're very different. And many times they're not according to what we want to do. Mary Lou, I'm just throwing this out to you. She called me. How many hours were you on the phone? And I knew, I just knew it wasn't, we're not trying to make her look bad, but I thought, no, she won't go, but I'll listen to her. And I spent hours on the phone for two or three days lining her up to come over here to the prayer meeting. And she didn't come because something happened. Even to the point that I would go out of my way to go pick her up. But if we get mad, we lost the deal. Amen. You understand? Then we got to go around the mountain again so God sets up something else to see how we're going to respond to it. Anybody getting what I'm saying? Amen. So it's another setup. <coughs> yeah. Hallelujah. But when he sets you up, it means he's about to feed you. Come on. He's about to show his name strong in you. Amen. He's about to bring forth victory 30, 60, and 100 fold. Amen. And I know he's going to come through sometime, so keep a good spirit. Yes. How many want to keep a good spirit? Yes. About everything. Amen. So they cut your days. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's because he's going to show you some new ways. Don't worry about it. God's working. A little girl came in here at our last meeting. I remember I said, you don't want to do a lot of talking after all the glory. Yes. I remember I said that. Yes. So if somebody wanted to spend some time talking with me, I said, honey, it's not time to talk. And it didn't do so well with their spirit. And they left suddenly. Guess what happened? And I thought, oh, God, i got to call her. i got to get this thing straightened out. They came to me Wednesday night and said they got in their car and the angels were singing all over the car. They, she was crying, trying to tell me out about it. She said, all the way home. I said, yes, honey, you've been in that atmosphere, and he wants the overflow. How many want the, I'll take the leftovers. Come on. I'll take the leftovers. 
I'm telling you something. There's more to God than what we understand. And it's just, it's not seeing his hand. You want to see his face. Come on, you want to look into his eyes. He's got one more surprise. Come on. Richard, give me a surprise sound over there. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, in power, yes, and I didn't come preaching and tasting words of men's wisdom, but I come in power and demonstration of the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. We were in church Wednesday night. I go to church expecting to come out learning something new, not just the same old piece of cake. Get biscuit. And pastor says, just as he got through, were you, you were there Wednesday night? You were there, you were there. Just when he got through praying over the people, I heard these words, I call you friends. And that's what he preached. <coughs> I could have prophesied. You understand? And I wished I had. I kicked myself all the way home to church. But you're hearing. You're hearing. Come on, you're hearing. Cause me to hear what the Spirit is saying. Hearing. Hearing. Get the wax out, Lord. I don't want to listen. Too many of us are running everywhere with itching ears to hear what the next person is saying. And we need to hear from what God is saying. We need to know what God is saying. Are you listening to me? You know, and you'll have peace that passes all in this day. You know. I'm hearing the same thing that Jerry Meyer Johnson is hearing. I'm hearing the same thing that Bobby Connors is hearing. I'm hearing the same thing. That you, I'm not bragging on myself. I'm telling you the Lord has honored me to hear. Amen. And he wants you to hear. Amen. Now, our prayer this morning is that we're going to hear from heaven. Yeah. And we're going to want to know what God wants to do about this abortion law. Come on. We want to pray. It's like things are in reverse. Yes. They won't move. And the hatred has gotten so bad that people just say whatever they feel like saying. It's okay. Right. That's right. Even Hollywood came out yesterday and said this new star that's shining right now in Washington, Alexandra, uh, said, that, said that she is the most dangerous person in America right now. Right. I said, well, why do you keep exploiting her? Don't talk about her. Don't, let right. them, don't talk about her. She won't be known. Come on. Talk about Jesus. Let him be known. Then now, let me just give you some little pointers here. Next time anybody calls you up and says, what's going on? Say, Jesus, are you with him? I mean, start a conversation about the Lord. Make it good. Amen. And they'll either hang their head or say yes. Keep talking about him. We're not religious here. Come on, we're trying to get people to heaven. Yes. We're trying to get people out of this world yes. into the presence of the Lord. My nephew that came, I just want to tell you this, he didn't believe in tithing. This went along with all the other things. He didn't want his mother paying any tax. And he said, it's Old Testament law. Well, you thought I left him hanging there? No, I didn't. <laughs> He's in my house now. <laughs> I said, but the word of God says in Corinthians, and I started to give it to him. Come on. What do you have to lose? Just turn the other cheek. It's the sign of God they haven't seen yet. Come on. God wants them to see Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Fill in the earth. There's a knowledge of the waters that covers the sea. The glory of the Lord that is upon you. Come on, there's a light inside of you that's going to shine. I've been asking God for that light. I, when I look at people, I said, Lord, I want to see the light. I want to see the light. I want to see the light. Who was it we were talking about? They were dark, and then suddenly their face began to lighten up. I'm trying to remember where it was. I said, look, the light is turned on. The light has come. God wants such a light in us. Are you listening to me? Such a light in us. Such a light in us that when we encounter people that you know and they've been resisting God, they're going to start confessing. They're going to start repenting. It's happened to me a few times in my life where people say, I hadn't said anything about Jesus. They just started telling me what they weren't doing right. Come on. Come on. Come on. The light is in you. The river is in you. The stream is in you. The drink is in you. The glory is in you. The gold is in you. The silver is in you. He's been working. He's been sending fire to purify the house of the Levi. How many are, are priests here this morning? Hallelujah. 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 Now I want you to let go of your arrows this morning. Will you pray? We're going to pray or praise or however you want to do it. I want, listen, 
We don't want to linger in a lot of talk. We want to take this microphone and we want to release the word of the Lord that it goes all the way into Washington, D.C. and every abortion clinic in this country and overseas as well. Israel has as many abortions as America through the military. They put the men and women together. Come on, you're going to see the repercussion of all these things. What happens? I know you do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get ready. We're going to pray for America. It's the abortion law and the same-sex marriage. Walmart. Anybody heard about Walmart? It's awful. Walmart has put out a video promoting homosexuality. In the, uh, in the store, uh, I've been meeting up and dating and so on and so forth. And anyway, I think uh, you have a little more information than I do. But... Uh, you want to make it a, d a, a dating meeting place for dates. Yes. Oh. And then yes. they threw out a questionnaire what we thought about it. Oh. I will not shop at Walmart anymore. No. I call it Walmart. We're done. I love it. We're done. And I got a phone number to call, too. It's probably jammed up. An 800 number. How many are going to pray? If you, you let him creep in, he's going to take our mile. Come on, you can't let these things get in. We can't. Not in my house, not in my door. My own brother came into my house using profanity one day, and I said, David, we don't cuss in this house. Oh, you don't? I mean, it was like, it's not going to Oh, you don't? I said, no. I said, my friend has virgin ears. Come on. Come on. Use some language there. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He apologized. He never apologized to anybody. And I knew he might go and never come back. Come on. Don't soften this thing. You've got to press the battle to the gates and see the victory. But they don't talk about it much in church. We're in a serious time here, folks. All right. Richard, we're going to get them on their feet and dancing and pouring out and get the gates open. Get the gates open. Hallelujah. And then we're going to enter into his, with thanksgiving, and then we're going to pray, and we're going to send help to the real lawyers in Washington. Come on, those that are on the right side of God. <laughs> the real men and women of God. We need some dance music. Hallelujah. I'll put your hands together. Jesus is coming. With an army.
don't know what time it was, but I heard a siren going off, and I just thought, this is where our whole country is at. But there's two verses, and one says <coughs> our nakedness is uncovered. The other one says that our doors are open. Our doors are, our gates are open. Our oh. gates are open. So what I've been praying here, what I've been repeating to the Lord is, Lord, cover our nakedness and bar our gates. And that's what the people of God need to be praying because the, that's what the people, many of the people in this country, they want our nakedness uncovered and they want our gates open. And we need to we need to pray against that. And we do. In Jesus' name we say, Lord, for your people, cover our nakedness and bar our gates in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hallelujah. It means that our shame is a reproach to God. Come on, have you got that? Our shame is a reproach. Approach to God. He said, I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire that the shame of your nakedness does not appear. He was speaking to the Laodicean church in the book of Revelation. He said that was what, verse 3? This is chapter 3 of Revelation. That was chapter 3 of Nahum. Yeah, that was Nahum. This is chapter 3 of Revelation. In other words, anybody, open up to me now. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Anybody ever had any dreams that you weren't completely dressed? There's nothing wrong with that. God wants to show us how to cover ourselves, keep ourselves protected, keep ourselves under the blood. I was I was at a point in my life that I uh, I had to come to a place that, uh, I had to come to a place in my life and say, God, you're number one. There's I, there's nothing more than you. And I cried that for a whole year, and I was by myself in my home. And then one day I was praising the Lord and I was crying. And I happened to look to my side and I was naked. And I looked up and I saw Jesus standing there. And I said, Lord, what is that that you're holding? He said, this is your robe of righteousness. Wow. And then he put it on me. And then I kept crying. And then that was it. It was like he had to show me that I need to know that I'm covered by him, by his righteousness. By his righteousness. Yes. And that comes through. Yes. The Bible says, what is the kingdom of God? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness just comes by doing the right thing to please the Lord. Doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what it is. God sees it. I'll just throw this out quickly. I mean, it's like, well, I'm cleaning this, and I'll, I'll just do it halfway. It's okay. No, God wants the spirit of excellence the best we can. I'm not talking about you got to let somebody see what you've done and I did this. No, we just did it before the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's the one that comes and gives the blessings. Yeah. It's a beautiful vision. You record it. Go ahead. He'll give you more. Hallelujah. Write a book on the things. All right, we're going to pray right now. We're going to start. Washington is 11 o'clock in front of you. Hallelujah. We're in the lower part. We're going to pray. There's no distance in God. Don't think you have to get in the car and drive over there, get in an airplane and go over there. There's no distance in God or we wouldn't be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to pray. You got that? There's no distance in God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Lord, your word says the poor man wants to die. And these babies have died before their time. God, we call unto you. Come on, we call. Let your faith arise. Let every enemy be scattered. Everybody in this room. God, we call unto you who formed and made. Lord, who formed, Lord, every part of the body. Lord, physically and spiritually. Lord, we call unto you that you will send help. You will send angels. You will send an army. You will send answers. Lord, you will remove the decay from this nation. Lord, you will remove the bad testimony from this country. Lord, you will remove every hindering hand that's trying to stop holiness and righteousness in this nation. Lord, we call unto you, the author and the finisher of the head. Lord, the creator, the maker is your name. Lord, we call unto you to help us. Lord, to reach past all what man is doing. Close the door to the evil. God, you'll make adjustments. You'll have the right people that cannot be gainsaid. Lord, you'll have people with answers in their mouth. Lord, you're sending the prophet into the king's chamber. Lord, you're sending the prophetic into the White House. Lord, you're sending the prophets into the church. Let us have ears to hear what the Spirit is speaking. We call on Moshev and Abel for Manavani, no more Moshev and Abel for Kamala.
I just saw that as I'm giving out authority. When you pray, God's going to answer your prayers. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, put the axe to the root. Root out what is evil. Root out, Lord, the stuff bearing fruit. Root it out. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. If we perish, we perish. If we suffer, we suffer. We know that you're exalted. You're high and lifted up, and you will have the last word. You will do the good thing. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him. You will do the good thing. Hallelujah. The awesome thing. Hallelujah. The perfect thing. Yeah. Your will be done. Hallelujah. Your kingdom come. In the abortion clinics. Yeah. In the abortion clinics. Let there be a visitation. Mockers 
in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. They are mothers of the word, of the truth, of, of purity. And listen, you got to tell people, I don't mean come down with a hammer, but if we don't, the Lord's going to come with a hammer. But tell them, tell them what they want to hear to not tell them you... I'm not going to have the blood on my hands. You need to know this. Amen. This is what's going to happen if you continue doing what you're doing. Amen. We are people that have lived above this and have seen the handiwork of the Lord. How many know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And we don't want to talk about it because it's been too horrible of what God has done. But that was part of the word where the Lord said he was going to put walls around this country. Come on, we've got to keep the water level high. We've got to keep our prayer level high. We've got to keep our fasting high, our commitment toward the Lord. He said to, to Elijah when he was complaining about Jezebel, he thought he was the only one. The Lord said, I got 7,000. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just like you. Hallelujah. And they're going to agree with me, the Lord says. And they're going to work for me. i got a people that are after my heart. And they're going to see what is right in there. And the Lord told them, my sister Ruth, he said, don't even nod your head if they come even with humored word, human word, or whatever you call them, words of humor. Don't even nod your head at it. Don't even be a part of it. This is a serious matter. This is not something silly here. This is a, listen, our very destiny is in jeopardy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. And you call on the Lord. Call on the name of the Lord. He said yes, the righteous yes, yes. will on. run into it and they'll be I saved. Know, yeah. They'll be safe. Yeah. He's a high tower. His name is this morning. He said he's going to execute judgment upon all. Somebody needs to get Madeline O'Hara online. Just be willing to do it. Write it in there. Remember Madeline O'Hara's death. Put it on your Google. But what she did against this country, the way she died was horrible. But we knew it. You hear me? We knew it was going to happen. Yeah. We knew it. You can't stop. Listen, when the when the die has been cast, you can't stop it. God is going to do it. He told Nineveh. He told Hezekiah. He gave Hezekiah so many years to put his life in order. He gave Nineveh 100 years, but he still destroyed. He took Hezekiah. It had been better to go the first time. But what's coming in the second judgment? Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? You don't want to be caught up in the whirlwinds of God. Come on. You don't want to get caught up in the whirlwinds of God. So just let your words be ordered. God, how about this? Take care of this. Just tell him. God, this needs to be taken care of. Amen. And I'll tell you, you'll have testimonies of the move of God and how he works. And all you'll be able to do, listen, is keep very quiet and humble and weep a lot. Because you've seen God come to the rescue. Are you Amen. listening to me? Amen. I told you about my brother in an accident. My mother's praying, Lord, my 17-year-old my son, I don't know where he is. I'm 15. I don't know where he is. She said, Lord, find him right now and help him. And the Lord said to her, I am right now. He had an accident, went to knock on the door, and it was a home of a Pentecostal preacher. And he took him in and helped him. Right now. Come on, God knows where your children are. He knows all the time what they're doing. Hallelujah. He knows what they're up to in Washington. Hallelujah. God, I declare that every congressman was... I hope they have good sense. But let's say this. Every congressman, Lord, don't let them be quiet. Let them stand and speak the truth. Yes. For your name's sake, let him say we will not listen to this. Lord, let an authority arise we've never Amen. heard before. Come on, let it arise. Let it arise in the church. Let it arise in the church. Let God arise and every enemy be scattered. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, come on. Yes. Holy Ghost, you're so wonderful. You're so beautiful. Blowing stronger and stronger. Hallelujah. If something's not working for you, listen. It's because something needs to be adjusted. 
something somewhere. It's got to, there's two reasons why something's not moving. Something's got to be adjusted or it's not the time of it. Uh, Hallelujah. And if it's not to go that way, he most likely will give you a scripture. Somebody will come to you with a dream or he will speak to you. This is not what I want. Are you hearing me? Yeah. You will hear from God. I'm telling you, it's easy to hear and not be upset. All upset in your mind. Don't be like that. God has given you the mind of Christ. He's given you the confidence of all of heaven. He said, I'm going to send 10,000 of my saints. He says, woe unto them. Listen, for they've gone the way of Cain. This is the description before the ungodliness came. Who is Cain? Cain didn't have the right sacrifice. They've gone the way of Balaam for a reward. What is that? It means that they did it for money. A lot of, lot of, I'm sorry, a lot of preachers today won't come unless you can guarantee them a certain amount of money. Right, right, right. And a person that knows God will not do that. Are you hearing me? Yeah. A person that knows God will not require anything. Amen. But they pray the presence of the Lord will be there. Yes. And then it says they've gone the way of Korah. Remember that, Cain, Balaam, and Korah. It means no sacrifice. It means they will do it for money or they'll be rebellious. This is what we're up against in the church. Oh, I don't need to do that. We don't want to have any phony baloney about us. Come on. Amen. The Lord spoke to me this morning about the condition of the trends of the church. I heard these words, very phony. I'm talking about some of the dress code. Very phony. Yeah. Come on, is anybody saying yes or amen? Yeah. This is all a part of righteousness that you put in order first. Bring the order at home. And then when you go out, you'll go out with joy. Be led forth with peace. Don't look like we just got out of bed. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. I'm just giving you the sidelines. I don't want to say anymore. But I heard the Lord say, very phony. Who are we? Who are we? We're dignitaries. Come on. You ever seen how the queen walks? Woo! She has a truck full of 27 dresses in case she wants to change. How many want to change? Well, God's got a wardrobe room right now. I'm not talking about just your clothes. I'm talking about putting on Christ. Put him on. Have the earmarks of Christ. The earmarks. Of Christ. The earmark, earmarks. Of and you know what will happen? I will guarantee you when you begin to meet people, they're going to say, who are you? And that's your introduction to open up. Amen. Who are you? I'm from the Lord. What do you need? Hallelujah. And you'll be in the place to say that. I'm not just sitting here talking funny. I'm telling you, when they, Samuel came to town, they all put out an anointing. They all got anointed to stand in his sight. He came with oil so they could withstand the judgment of God that was coming. They asked him what was he there for. I'm not trying to put judgment on you. I'm telling you, I'm trying to keep you from the judgment of the Lord. Amen. Walk uprightly before the Lord. Walk pure in his sight as much as you can. And you'll be tried all day long. Listen to me. It doesn't mean you won't be tried. You'll be tried from everything to Listen to me. Of two pieces of cake being set into in front of you and somebody else, will you take the smaller or the bigger piece? That's how close it is. Amen? How many of you have ever gone into a, into a buffet or what do they call it, a cafeteria, and you got all this pie, and I'll see people reach way in the back to get the bigger piece? That's just a little fox I'm talking to you about. But I'm telling you that's how the flesh works against the spirit. And God wants us to be happy if we have bread and water, Amen. if we have a roof over our head, Amen. and we have peace at our door. Yes. Amen? Amen? He always wants you to take the lower road. I've been singing that song. You take the high road, and I'll take the low road, and I'll be in Scotland before you. And I said, God, what are you trying to say to me? And he was saying, take the least. Take second place. Be willing to take second place. God's moving people to the forefront. Those that can stand the heat of the day. Amen? The heat of the day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Many times.
shall take the back seat. I don't even know where I sit in the church. Did you know that? I'll just throw it out to you. I went and sat in one place and I got moved three times except Wednesday night. You'd be willing to be the pawn on the check on the checkerboard that God's moving. He's going to make you kings. He's going to make you queens. He's going to make you strong in the Lord you've known him. I'm not looking for that. I'm not looking for first place. These are the little foxes. You know, we don't want to hear about these things, but this is what brings you face to face with the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 And you don't know what God is doing when he starts shifting you around because it's leading to something greater, but along the way, there's always these checkpoints where he starts cutting away and subtracting to take us to the higher place. We hear prosperity all the time, but we don't tell people how to get there. Does anybody know what I'm saying? Yeah. Have you ever tried to come across the United States with no stop signs, no red lights, <coughs> nothing? No triptych? You might end up in Canada. We have the roadmap right here that we, the Bible says, let us reason together. And we're reasoning in with him this morning for this abortion law to be done away with. Yes. Come on, God will put the ax to the root. Yes. Yes. The ax to the root. Yes. Now, listen, another word that the brother said, he said, the abor here's another word, the abortion law is going to separate the black from the white. That's what he said. You look it up. It's going to cause a civil war in this country. Yes, so you got to be ready for what happens. we got to be prepared. It's not going to get any better. I don't care what anybody says. I've seen too many visions, and I know you have too. And sometimes we don't want to see them because it hurts. You don't want to see it. I live every day now, not for the greater thing I'm going to have or for the retirement or for the interest. What are we living for? When we're living to see a great, great harvest yes. of people. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And we got to pray that it doesn't come to civil war. I heard the Lord say to me, war between the states. Rick Joyner said it also, if you want to take his word instead of mine. He said there's going to be a civil war in this country. We don't need that. We'll have martial law. It'll be tough to go places. It'll be difficult for those that don't know how to move. I say, why do you tell me all these war stories? Because there won't be any victory unless we fight them. Amen. 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 God's given us the battle plan. It's called P R A Y. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else want to come and pray? Sister Ruth? Yes. I keep seeing uh, that logo, Arm and Hammer. And I don't know if, if it's the arm of the Lord or if it's our arm. Well, you need to, it's called talking about building our muscle. When you see the arm and hammer, it's the flexing the muscles, being strong. And it is the arm with the hammer. If you, I mean, either way you want to, you've seen it. And he may give you three divisions on what it really means. How many of you know that the word is universal? And it can be five or six revelations, but they'll all mean the same thing. I mean, I can call you man, boy, sir, um, brother, mister. You know what I'm saying? But it all means the same thing. It will all agree with the word of God. But you keep seeing that arm and hammer. I believe the Lord's about to use the arm and the hammer. He's about to put the nail in a sure place. Hallelujah. Behold, the Lord God shall come. With a strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead those who are with young. Behold, the Lord God shall come with a strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. 
he will gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young. Father, we thank you for your hand upon us, that you will direct our steps, that you will cause us to come out of the belly of the whale of indifference and confusion and, and uh, rebellion, Lord. You will cause us to be vomited up on dry land. And you will bring streams in this desert, this desert of a nation, Lord God. And Father, I pray that your, the streams of your living water would flow out of our bellies. That we would speak your truth in love, Lord. For love is mightier than hatred. And love has overcome death. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that you're going to pour out your blood all over this nation. And as we were praying, as Sister Ruth was releasing her prayers, I saw a mighty flood coming out of this, a flood of your blood coming out of this prayer meeting and covering the land and cleansing the land. And little babies coming out of our prayers, Lord, babies that were slated for death. And they're going to live, Lord. We speak life to those mothers. We say your hand is upon those wombs. Your hand, your hand will bring the victory. Your hand brings life. Your hand, hand defeats the lies and the destructions of the enemy, Lord God. And we want to be like Jonah and preach your word. But, Lord, let us not regret afterwards, Lord. Let us go on and go from glory to glory and strength to strength, Lord. Let us, like Sister Ruth said, preach the word in season and out of season all the days of our life. As long as you give us breath, let us praise you. Let us lift your name on high. For you are the one who brings life. You are the one who has the power of life and death. And we speak life over the babies of our land. Life, life, life. And your love will defeat the darkness. It will dis defeat this spirit of death, Lord God. And let us stand for, for love, your love, Lord God, that will defeat every power of darkness. And the other thing I saw is I saw mighty angels. And they were just waving, 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 causing a wind of God to come over our land and just knocking down the darkness before them, Lord. So, Father, we will not grow weary in well-doing. We will keep praying. We will keep believing in you. You are the one who has already won the victory. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah.
strong hand on Messiah. And his arm shall woo for him. He said he saw an arm and a hammer. He's going to put things in a sure place. And he shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He, his flock, he said. And he shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are young. There's another scripture that says, Behold, I will make you a threshing instrument, a new sharp threshing instrument. Behold, I will make you a sharp being instrument to take the mountains of the Lord. Behold, I will make you a sharp threshing instrument. I will make you a sharp threshing instrument. I will make you a sharp threshing instrument to take the mountains of the Lord. Behold, I will make you a sharp threshing instrument. Behold, I will make you a sharp threshing instrument. Behold, I will make you a sharp threshing instrument. I'll give 
get you to where you want to go. Come on. God will cause your enemies to be at peace. And your enemies to bless you. Your neighbors are going to come from afar. He said, I'll cause them to come from afar. I'll cause them to come on their camels. I'll cause them to come with their blessings. Hallelujah. The King is coming. The Lord is coming to bless His people with what they have need of. Come on, not what we don't need, but what we have need of to get the job done. Hallelujah. I call somebody up to help them. I'm like an arbitrator between them and somebody else in Cambodia. They actually call me, but I felt to call them a few weeks ago and didn't, and they call me. So I'm trying to help them in Israel. They said, you want to go? I'll pay you away. Come on. God's going to have opportunities. you got to know which ones to take. Hallelujah. You have to know. Keep your suitcase ready. Keep your hair fixed. Get dressed like you're going somewhere every day. Keep your passport where you can find it. Hallelujah. You don't know when the escorting service of heaven's going to come by. And he's going to send you like an arrow in his hand. Hallelujah. Into the camp of the enemy. Glory to God. Glory to God. I got the opportunity. I've been swaying it back and forth whether to go during the days of what are the days? I'm looking at the Passover. Passover. Hallelujah. Come on. Coming by without money. He's calling you, honey. Hallelujah. Lord, we're calling you, honey. You said we gave you no honey. Lord, that those things weren't formed. But God, we're calling you, honey. Hallelujah. Glory. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. Come on, keep thanking him for what he's doing in Washington, D.C. God, I pray. Now listen, I feel something for this man. Maybe you don't. It's being questioned in court. He's been the scapegoat. I don't care what you say. I feel, I really feel, feel concerned for him. God, I thank you for helping this man in a way that he should be helped. God, do the honorable thing by him. And Lord, let all those people that are trying to hide behind him. He's covering for a lot of people. Lord Jesus, I want all of you to think about this. All these people are trying to railroad him, and he's probably guilty of a lot of things. But they're the same people that just voted for the abortion legislation. Come on, which is worse? Come on. There are some evils that are worse in God's sights than the other. There's greater penalties and greater judgments. You all know that. Amen? We had a girl in our ministry that was taking money out of the funds because she picked up the mail every day so she'd go through the letters. Is there any cash you would take it? Not with her right hand. I knew it and others knew it, but we couldn't say anything because she was part of the head of the ministry. She was kin to them. One day she appeared with the worst grace and contraption on her hand and her arm that had been broken in three places. Wow. Behind every whirlwind is a story. Something God is trying to shake off. But we knew it was the money. It took her arm eight months to heal. It had a great big pins here and pins here and pins there. And we weren't allowed to say anything. We knew she was taking the money. We were told we couldn't say anything. Well, God said something. I'm sorry to tell you this, but I'm telling you we're going to see a lot of things happen. But God's going to do it with honor to raise a standard in the land, to raise a standard in the church, to raise a standard. Listen to me, you don't think this is God, but I'm telling you, there was another party in the family. They were running to the pastor and telling tales on the people all the time, and he didn't want to hear it. So they'd run to another pastor. One day I saw a hole in the top of his head in a vision, and I'm looking in the scripture to find out what it meant. You say, why do you tell these stories? Because it's the testimony of Jesus, and if it will save us, any of us, from breaking our legs, we need to hear it. Can anybody agree? Yes. 
we were fighting against the odds in this ministry for years. And I won't tell you some of the sufferings, but your sufferings is what raises you to a new place to have authority to command ye me the work of my hands. And I saw the hole in his head, and I didn't know what it was. And 20 years went by, and one day I opened the Bible and it says, I shall put a wound in their heads. But I didn't know what that meant. And in the past, and these are not stories you like to tell, they're horror stories. But I'd rather be saved from the horror chamber for somebody to warn me and tell me. Thank God they, these, these two people got saved out of it. They got their life straight. He got a hole in his head. It went down into his nose and into his eye. He had to remove his eye because he was reporting things all the time, running, reporting things that he shouldn't, even to the point that he had a son that worked for the police force. And when any cars would come into the ministry, he'd call his son to find out who they were. And God was not pleased with that. And so we want to be a people. If you want to know something, let God tell you, don't go on a witch hunt. You understand? Let God tell you. He'll open the word to you. He'll give you a dream. He'll give you a prophecy. But don't try to find out information. I feel that this is happening in the body of Christ. I want him to know stuff. But, but we prayed and prayed. He lost his eye, got into his nose, got all into his body. He took treatment, but he's still alive. He's the only member of the family that lived to be over 60 years of age. All the rest of the people died young. We want to be a people that give ourselves over to the Lord totally without reservations. Totally. Totally. There's a, a side of God that we haven't seen at the time. We keep ourselves humble. The Bible says, He's never wrong. He's never wrong. Hallelujah. He does what is good. And he said, I've showed thee, O oh man, what is good. What does the Lord require of you but to do justly? He says that first. Then we can ask for mercy. And to walk humbly with our God. Think about that. If we do justly, we can ask for mercy. We can remind the Lord. We don't have to, but Hezekiah said, Lord, remember. Remember, he turned his face to the Lord. Lord, remember, I've done this and this and this. And before Isaiah could leave the courtroom, he already said, go back and tell him I'm going to give him 15 years. Yes. So we can remind the Lord, I did this when you asked me to do this. Lord, it was hard, but I did it. And so you people that have sacrificed your homes and your beds, there will always be a bed for you. I told them that before they got to England. Now, Lori and Steve, they were not included in the picture nor in the in the price of the ticket, nor even in the invite. But we just said we have two other people with us. And I'm telling you, they cleaned the whole house out and restored it, painted it, put beds in it and everything for us. You get on commanding territory with the Lord. I'm saying you lay your life down, you suffer a few things, you do things you don't feel like doing. You think, I don't have another ounce of strength to do it. But the country... Is on a fence right now. How many of you feel that? I've had visions that I wake up and say, I don't want to see that anymore. Thank you, Jesus. And if the Lord would really open our Stay eyes, with us. we would be able Changing to Changing batteries. Who would be